Hey guys, Kai Vertigo here. And if you're watching this, chances are you've probably already seen some of the incredibly mind-blowing footage that FPV drones are able to capture for both online and the big screen, from diving off of buildings to chasing cars like a video game. And you may have gotten so inspired that now you want in on the action. There's just one issue. Okay, maybe not just one, maybe a couple of different steps that are stopping you from flying like the next Captain Vanover or Nerf. From building, programming, soldering, testing, crashing, flying, crashing again, filming, it's quite a tall order just to get up in the air. But the good news is that the barrier to entry is gradually getting easier with every new improvement and update that the community and the companies supporting FPV are putting out there. And this week, GoPro just launched some incredible new updates, not just with the Hero 10 Bones, but also with the official launch of the Real Steady GoPro Player. So today we're gonna talk about how it's going to change the game, if it's worth it, what it means for the FPV community, specifically the cinematic FPV community, and what it means for you. For those who don't know, Real Steady is a post-stabilization software designed by alien geniuses, Andy Russell and Robert McIntosh, for the purpose of taking even the most terrible, shakiest GoPro footage and turning them into the smoothest, most cinematic, buttery masterpieces imaginable, without complicated hardware or software like gimbals, and post-processing and keyframing. All right, now let's watch a clip of a non-real steady video next to a real steady video. And you're going to see that even when I'm doing quick jerks, I recorded my thumbs just so you can see it. It's actually not super smooth. Real steady does what it can to actually make these points very buttery somehow still. It's such a good software. It's very, very smart. And it can save your butt a lot of times. I'd be lying if I said that real steady was not a huge part in enabling me to do FPV work professionally faster because I wasn't the best pilot, I'm still not the best at tuning, and I'm still not super stable on the sticks, but as long as I'm piloting well enough, then Real Steady can help me attain the shots, and all the shakiness is not something I have to worry about. The footage will take care of it, as long as it's within the primers and you set it up properly. But as good and as revolutionary as Real Steady Go was, many pilots who fly FPV professionally, like myself, can say that Real Steady Go was still an unfinished product. You need an internet to make it work, so if you're on set or outside in a place without connection, you can't use Real Steady and show it to the client. And even if you wanted to show it to the client, there was no real-time playback. It would be chop, chop, frame by frame, frame by frame. You're screwed if you don't follow the format to the T, or for some reason, sometimes I just have random errors that wouldn't let me Real Steady my clip, and that actually ruined a lot of shots for the productions I was on sometimes. But because of just how great Robert and Andy made Real Steady go, GoPro actually decided to pick them up and take their product to the next level. Let's jump into the computer now, and I'm gonna show you guys some examples of how Real Steady's GoPro player is going to just change the game for FPV pilots and cinematic flyers. So we are currently in Real Steady Go, which is the predecessor to the Real Steady GoPro player. It's pretty straightforward. Load video. You're gonna load the video that you filmed on your GoPro on. You have to make sure it's the right format, such as keeping it in four by three, keeping it wide, turning off hyper smooth. If you didn't turn off hyper smooth, you're gonna get this message. Boom, cannot stabilize, in-camera stabilization was used. Oh no, your clip is screwed. Let's say that you were smart enough to uh, to turn off hyper smooth though. Okay, let's do it. Click open, we're in the numbers, we're gonna count. Okay, we got image, that's pretty cool. I thought when I got a better computer, I have the M1X MacBook, that the playback would be faster, but that is not the case. Real Steady Go software is just slower. The playback is cool. I like to see things frame by frame, to be honest. It's kind of cool, but it's not great for having the best idea of what your video is going to look like once it's processed. You won't know until it's processed. You can't watch it in real playback until then. All right, let's say I want to render this out. I'm going to make a very short clip, just so you guys can see. It's probably going to be like 10 seconds. going to hit. Save video, boom. Output video will not contain audio. So that's another thing. If you do decide that you want to cut and trim your clip in Real Steady Go, it will not save the audio. And that can be bad for some situations, especially when you want to synchronize sound or something like that. All right, it's done. And so the video you're seeing on screen now is the footage that was rendered by Real Steady. Very, very short, but it took almost two minutes. Looks good, looks great. The actual product is excellent. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it takes a lot of time and I can't render multiple clips. Look how many clips I have. I have four clips. Now let's take a look at the new GoPro player that GoPro has worked with Real Steady on and compare it, okay? So this is how it looks. It is very official. It is now acquired by GoPro. So the GoPro player is also what you use to manipulate 360 footage as well if you have a GoPro Max. So it's a double function, it's excellent. Let's go ahead and open this. This actually has hyper smooth on it. So. 
It's really interesting. Um, I'm gonna put a side by side just right now so you can see what the real steady video looks like versus hyper smooth. And then you can kind of tell the difference, right? You can probably see that hyper smooth is great, but it's still jittery versus real steady. Take a look. And the best part is I just opened up the hyper smooth clip in real steady go. So if I accidentally forgot to turn off hyper smooth, I'm not completely screwed. If this was real steady go, your clip would not be able to be smooth post process. So this is already really cool. And on top of that, watch what happens when I press play. It's real time. It's playing in real time and it's real steady before I've even rendered it out. That's actually awesome. And I can, it can even scrub so quickly. It doesn't take forever for it to load. It's so much smoother. Oh my goodness. I can even speed up. I use L. I, I can slow down. I can set my trim points like this. Let's say I wanted to cut it from here. 140. Okay, it's about 20 seconds. It's about double what we did in Real Steady Go. Let's see what happens when we do this. Export trim. Look at that. Okay, so we already have so many more options. Usually you would just click it and then you'd be done. But you can change the smoothness, the cropping speed. It's just like in Real Steady Go, but it's a lot faster. You can even change the lens correction. And this is the cool part right here. Take a look at this. So this is allowing us to render different codecs, which can be really, really powerful for different productions. HEVC is the highest compression. H.264 is the standard. And then this is crazy, guys. I did not expect this to be here, but this is ProRes. ProRes is a codec that it's huge files, but it also keeps the quality like maximized. And you can really just color the heck out of it and do all of these different effects to it because it really maintains a lot of quality, which is crazy. Uh, I don't recommend always using it because it, like I said, it creates huge files. So, and we're going to, instead of clicking next, if we click next, it would just export. What we can do, we can send it to Q. Check this out. There it is, okay. All right, look at that. We have a queue now, guys, which is super cool. If I wanted to, I could even take the other videos. Let's say while we're here, we also want to stabilize the first clip I shot. Boom, just drop it in like that. I don't even have to go to the real steady player. That's so much faster. And now I don't have to wait one by one. Okay, this is going to be incredible, though. You're going to want to watch this, okay? So this is only available to Apple. Uh, on Windows, there's a different type of codec. I forgot what it's called. It's up here. I think it's like Cine something. But I'm clicking ProRes, okay? Watch how fast this is. Boom. This is a five minute clip. It's already at 5%. It's going like four times faster than the 28 second clip, which I rendered out in H.264. So that's cool. That is super mega cool. This clip is gonna be done in like a minute and it's a five minute clip. That is unheard of for real steady. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the clip that I rendered out here while I'm talking. This was a ProRes clip and it finished in less than a minute, which is incredible. In the past, after a long shoot, I'd have to come sit to my desk, put my card in, and then I'd have to render out these videos one by one and have to sit by the computer in order to start the next video to render. Now that there's an export queue, I can just load them all in and just do something else. It's so great. I'm actually a huge fan of this, especially once you get to the point that you have a lot of clips that you need to render. This is a godsend. Real Steady Go used to cost $99. And before GoPro released Real Steady 2, there were speculations on how much Real Steady 2 was going to cost. But when they finally released it, they announced it with the awesome news that anybody who bought Real Steady Go gets the Real Steady GoPro player extension for free. So that means that there is no markup on price and you don't have to pay twice if you have Real Steady Go. So go and get that if you already have it. If you don't have Real Steady Go, you haven't bought it yet and you're trying to figure out if it's worth it for you, the question to consider is who is this for? And in my opinion, Real Steady GoPro player is for any FPV pilot or GoPro creator who is trying to make their footage look more professional, smoother, and cinematic. So if that sounds like you, if you want really buttery shots and you feel like you want to continue pursuing cinematic FPV as potentially a extra form of income, as a hobby, as an artistic, arti uh, artistic endeavor, then this is for you. I highly recommend it. And I remember when I bought Real Steady Go, $99 does seem like a pretty big investment for a piece of software, something you can't even touch. But to be honest, and this is a bold statement, this is probably one of the biggest returns on investments I've gotten from something I've invested to in FPV. It has never really failed me. Even though it wasn't perfect, it was still great. And now that the fact that the better version is available for the same price, it is a no brainer for people like us, cinematic FPV pilots and GoPro creators who want buttery, smooth, footage. Now, if you don't have $99 to spend on Real Steady Go right now, it's okay. You can still use Gyroflow, which is an incredible open source software that's been created more recently 
that can work with a lot of other cameras besides GoPros. It's a really cool software. It's just more complicated, it takes a little bit more getting used to. I'm still learning how to work it and I'm going to continue learning how to work it. But for the ease of use and for the clean user interface and just how smooth it runs because it is a GoPro software working with GoPros, I am more than willing to pay the amount that they're asking for. And it's a no brainer compared to Real Steady Go because that was $100 too. This is the same price and you're getting so many more features and functions. I personally think it's very worth it. And if you want to take a look at Real Steady, I'll link it below so you can go ahead and grab it yourself. If not, I'll link Gyro Flow below too so you can take a look at that. And if you want to check out more videos, and you want to learn a little bit more about FPV, take a look at these two videos right here that may or may not be relevant to you. Thank you for watching again. My name is Kai from Vertigo Vision, and I'll catch you in the next one. Dance time, dance time. Don't let me distract you from clicking these next videos. I haven't sessioned in like a week, so. <laughs>